demonstrates how to use a persistent vein of Marshall to implant someone with CS uh, occlusion as a result of previous atrial septal defect repair. Uh, the patient had atrial septal defect repair uh, at age five, uh, now has complete heart block and pacing induced RV myopathy in his mid 40s. Um, and we were able to get uh, a glide wire uh, into the coronary sinus, but we were unable to advance anything over the glide wire, including the vertebral vein selector. So uh, given that we had the wire in, in the coronary sinus, uh, we advanced a three millimeter balloon, uh, but it wouldn't go any further than right there. Um, and usually those, uh, those three millimeter balloons go very easily. So we tried to uh, advance this microcatheter, which is even smaller than a balloon, and that wouldn't go into the coronary sinus. So that's the best we could do following venoplasty. So he went up and looked uh, to see if there was a persistent vein of Marshall using the standard five French vein selector and uh, dragged it along looking at this right around the sternal clavicular junction for a small vein leading down uh, to the coronary sinus. And fortunately, uh, there was one there. So we were able to identify the vein of Marshall and then insert a wire. Uh, and again, the wire type's important. This is a uh, choice PT floppy. And then to, to uh, further stabilize the wire, we advanced the microcatheter through the vein selector uh, down into the persistent, down the persistent vein of Marshall, and then changed the wires. And we were able to then uh, advance the wire into the right atrium up into the SVC and out into the left subclavian. And from here, uh, we advanced a, a nine French, or we, uh, excuse me, we have the nine French sheath here, the veins, five French vein selector, and then the four French uh, snare with a 10 millimeter loop. You open the loop of the snare, uh, advance the wire through the open snare. You wanna make sure you have plenty of wire through the snare so you don't pull the tip off, so 10 millimeters anyway, uh, and then close the snare on the wire. Now this gives us a really good rail uh, from where we can work. So with the wire snared, uh, we removed the microcatheter and then replaced the microcatheter with a three millimeter balloon, uh, was advanced down the vein of Marshall, and we were able to this time inflate the balloon and get it all the way out into the right atrium and back again. That wouldn't be big enough to get the sheath in, so we went next with a six millimeter balloon, six millimeter by four centimeter balloon, this designed to go over an 018 wire. Um, it's a peripheral balloon, but it was too large to go down the vein of Marshall. Remember how small that was. So we then decided that we would approach it from the coronary sinus, from the right atrium this time. So we brought the microcatheter all the way down the vein of Marshall, and then used a snared wire and advanced wire into the uh, microcatheter and withdrew uh, with the snare. And then once we had the wire externalized, we were able to advance that same six millimeter by four centimeter balloon down um, through the uh, dilated, already slightly dilated, uh, coronary sinus, uh, and this is the vein, this is the microcatheter back here, this is a six millimeter balloon, and you can see the stenosis uh, finally successfully dilated, and I'm moving the balloon back and forth here just to make sure that it, that we have a wide open uh, patent uh, coronary sinus. And then we took this, the whirly sheath that was up above, uh, and we're advancing it down over the angioplasty wire, but the angioplasty wire is covered uh, with the microcatheter, so there's very little transition. There's the, di the tip of the dilator, which has been pre-curved, and we're able to uh, advance uh, into the coronary sinus. So now we have the sheath in the coronary sinus. So we, before we took out the um, dilator, we put the amplast wire in to hold, st hold it safe and steady, 
uh, and we could see that we were up here where the vein of Marshall was, and here's the true CS. So we needed to get ourselves back into the true CS. So we took a vein selector, the standard, uh, excuse me, the vertebral vein selector, and advanced it over a glide wire into the true, cl true CS. Um, and then once we had the, the vertebral vein selector in, we took the glide wire out and changed the position of the Amplatz wire uh, back into the CS. We then did a venogram and we saw that really our only uh, target vein that we could, we could do without doing venoplasty was down here near the CS os. But because we had the Amplatz wire stable in place, we're able to uh, withdraw the sheath stabilized by the vein selector, excuse me, stabilized by the Amplatz wire and then use the vein selector uh, to identify the target branch and we put in first one wire uh, and then added a second wire for stability and then advanced the vein selector in and followed that with the subselector. Uh, took some pictures of the vein just to see if there were any other side branches we might uh, be available, any other target lateral wall branches as well so that we could plan on our implant uh, based on what we saw. And we saw the side branch here in case uh, it was unstable or uh, had any issues going straight out. And so turns out there were some issues with pa uh, phrenic pacing more distally. So we were able to uh, change uh, and put the tip of the, this is a, a long spiral from um, Boston Scientific, put that down in there. And we had a, a great QLV of 140 milliseconds and uh, pacing thresholds of less than a volt. So that's sort of a, uh, a uh, summation of a whole variety of techniques, but it just goes to show uh, what's possible uh, with these techniques and tools. Thank you for your interest.